React 19 is now stable and in the next 10 minutes I'm excited to show you some of the most powerful new features and improvements. Whether you're coming from a Next.js background or simply exploring the latest version of React, there's a lot to be excited about. In my opinion, React 19 is a well-rounded upgrade. We now have improvements in how we handle server components and server actions, powerful new hooks that simplify async data mutations, and a raft of enhancements in DOM handling and server rendering. Before we get into the video, if you could leave a like, I would really appreciate it, and let's dive in. Let's start with server components. In React 19, frameworks like Next.js use server components by default. This means that you can mark a component as async and fetch data right in your component without the need of a use effect. The server does all of the heavy lifting and sends pre-rendered markup to the client. On the flip side, we now have server actions. These let client components call async functions executed on the server simply by adding a use server directory at the top. Server actions are especially useful because they automatically manage pending states, error handling, and even optimistic updates when you submit forms. So instead of having a component that looks like this, you might end up with a cleaner version like this. Next up, we have actions, a major new concept in React 19. Actions simplify data mutations significantly. Previously, handling pending states, errors, and optimistic updates meant a lot of manual state management. Now, using async transitions with the use transition hook automatically sets a pending state for you as the async request begins and then resets it when it's done. Building on that, React 19 also renames an old hook called the use form state to the use action state. And this hook you can use to further simplify form submissions. It basically wraps around your async functions so that you automatically get access to the pending state and any error returned by your action. It is also very important to note that in React 19, an action doesn't have to be strictly a server action. While the server action annotated with the use server at the top runs entirely on the server, you can also have a client side function that calls server actions. This gives flexibility in designing your application logic, letting you decide where and how your data should be processed. Next, let's talk about optimistic UI updates. This new version introduces a hook that has been teased in the past called the use optimistic hook. This hook lets you provide immediate optimistic feedback to users. So for example, look at the code below. As soon as a new name is submitted to the form, the UI updates instantly even while the async request is still underway. This creates a snappy and responsive user experience. When the server action eventually completes, the UI will automatically synchronize, removing the temporary optimistic state if necessary. Now, React 19, massively upgrades the use of refs. And this is something I've been waiting for a very long time. Because previously, if you were to pass a ref between components, you had to do something super annoying and use a forward ref function with a bunch of cumbersome typings. Now, if you wanna pass refs between components, you can very easily pass them as if you were passing props. So it's as simple as passing a normal prop, which is a major upgrade. On a similar topic, React now has a new hook. And this hook is completely different from all of the other hooks. It is called the new use hook. And this specifically is more meant for data or context fetching. This allows you to pass promises like a fetch request directly to the use hook and then wrap your component in a suspense boundary for a graceful loading state. This hook simply replaces both the need to fetch data instead of a use effect and also the need to use the old use context hook. Now, one of the changes that I think people really didn't talk that much about, but in my opinion is one of the coolest new things for the new version of React is that it makes resource management way easier. Now you can declare style sheets and async scripts directly within your component tree and React will ensure that they deduplicate it and insert it in the proper order. There are even new APIs for preloading resources, such as prefetching DNS or pre-connecting to critical hosts. In addition, document metadata like titles, meta, links, all of that are automatically hoisted into the head. So you can manage your app's metadata right directly inside of your component. Finally, React 19 also introduces major improvements via the React compiler. 
This feature can automatically detect and optimize heavy computations that you will normally wrap in something like a use memo or a use callback hook. Now, this is something that is not new. That's why I left it for last. And it's something that they had announced way, way before when they first announced what React 19 might look like. And this is great because now you don't need to use the use memo hook or the use callback hook, reducing boilerplate and potentially boosting performance. Now, to wrap it up, React 19 isn't just about one or two features. It is a comprehensive upgrade from streamlined data mutations with actions and powerful new hooks to improved server-side rendering and resource management. There's literally a lot to love. Now, if you're using Next.js, many of these features will feel right at home because it's very similar to your experience while coding a Next.js app. And if you want a deeper dive into React, I highly recommend my new React.js course for beginners. It is not released yet, it is coming in a couple weeks, and by the time you're seeing this, it might have been released already. So if you want to check it out, check the link in the description, because I put a lot of effort into this, and this is going to be my first React course. Super hyped to see what you guys think of it, and thank you so much for watching.